Are you gonna drive this thing? Do I wanna drive it? I don't think you want me to drive it. It's such a beautiful day in Cape Cod. We are in Barnstable Harbor, and we have a new friend. Come up a foot, you think? In the last yeah, yeah. half an hour? Yes, yeah, this tide is like charging. Coming in. He's gonna take us out. He's gonna show us his whole operation, where he farms all the oysters, how they grow them, how they harvest them. With love, right, Nate? <laughs> Tons of love right here. I love oysters, and I have my sunscreen on. Did you guys wanna try a couple oysters right now? Sure. They're nice and cold. We're really gonna kinda go behind the scenes and see how they're grown. Cows especially excited to eat a bunch of oysters. Cows? Those are monsters. I mean, everyone is, but. Yeah, why would you just eliminate me? I mean, me? you too. <laughs> I mean, there's a subtlety to oysters. It's less about the flavor and more about the cold, the brine, the texture. And then I think in a lot of cases, like also the setting in which you're eating them. Also, they go great with champagne, which is my favorite drink of all time. Not that that's like an original take at all. How long have we been up? Three hours. No way. Yeah. That means you've been up since five. That is correct. Wow. Not a morning person. You're just filming this whole thing? Yep. We got there early, for me, because we wanted to go during low tide, where you could see the most. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Hi, how are you? Hi, good, I'm John. Nice to meet Hi, you. Nice to meet I'm you. Claire, Hi, thanks Claire. for having us. I thought we would start at our upwiller, where our seed, so like our baby oysters, take a little boat ride out to the farms where we can see another stage in their growth process, and then also meet up with the crew as they're harvesting some oysters to eat today. Awesome. I've been farming oysters for around 12 years. I was a full-time fireman for about 22. Just retired a year ago. So we're just kind of dedicating everything now to the farm and we love it. This amount of being on a boat is fine with me. So we started at Barnstable Harbor. I'm not really a boat person, but we were in this kind of bay area where it was like super calm. The first stop was at like a little dock right in the harbor next to this sort of bridge where in low tide there's like this lots of sort of flowing water making this kind of waterfall under the bridge. Have they closed any beaches for the Great They wife? closed them all the time. Yeah? For sightings, yeah. Mm. It was this area called the Upweller where he has literally like a million of these little baby oyster seeds in bags that are just sitting there in the harbor sort of protected. Now just be careful getting all this water flow around them. There's like a trough in the middle, uh -huh. and there's a pump in the middle of that that, that sucks water up and out the trough. Uh -huh. And in these silos, we call them, there's like a mesh bottom. And so the water gets upwelled through the silos and then out through the trough. Uh -huh. So it's a really big flush of food for the, the seed yeah. oysters to eat. Okay, so here's like oh, wow. some more baby oysters. Yeah, and you can kind of see the different sizes. You kind of ah. have two vintages going. Uh -huh. So this is our product for next year. Uh -huh. And last year's product we're selling now mm -hmm. or in a few months. So you see that like kind of translucent, like feather yeah. edge we call it. Uh -huh. So that's kind of how they grow. They kind of push their bottom shells out and then fill up. Cal, actually all three of us keep chickens. Oh yeah, they and we love give them. them crushed up yeah. oyster shell. We had chickens for the longest time. Help them out, yeah? The eggs are just... It, I'm beautiful. It's so great. So the next phase would be we would take one of these silos out and sieve it and the ones that hang up on our bigger mesh, we would take out to the farm and put in like a different container, like a larger mesh container. You know, the more flow, the more food. If you had to guess a count yeah. on the whole, this whole dock. Right here, there's a couple million. Wow, yeah. okay. Yep. That's, that's a lot of oysters. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little deeper than you think, but just gotta okay. go down. You feel them in there, you can't hurt them. Okay. Oh God. Does it matter on what side? Doesn't matter, yeah. Away. <laughs> I don't think I can reach. Oh my god, I can't. I, literally, that's, I can't. I don't feel anything. <laughs> you gotta go way in. Don't fall in. I, <laughs> we can fake it. You wanna fake it? Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, perfect. They're so soft at this stage. So you gotta go down like you're grabbing them. Oh my god, Vinny. How's that? That's not believable. Yeah, that's not believable. <laughs> well, it didn't happen. That's why it's not believable. You were born in Yarmouth? Yeah. And now you live in Barnstable? Yep. Which, they're next to each other, right? Yes. My Cape Geography. 
We're driving through these kinds of like tidal sandbars where like at high tide they're covered and low tide it like, reveals this kind of like big expanse and just really beautiful and like the perfect way to spend a Cape Cod morning. So we're on the north side of the Cape right here. Yeah. And that kind of protects us from a lot of like storms, northeasters and everything. The aquacultural zone where we're going to is like a hundred acres. It's like one of the largest salt marshes on the east coast. They're kind of like the rainforest of the sea. It's like oh, wow. super rich with nutrients. It's really neat. You know this thing about like you should only eat oysters in months that yeah. end in, what is it, like Y or something? January, Arr. February or Arr. something? R? Do you want to debunk that? Is that it, not a thing? It's not a thing. Okay, it, right. It's it, not it, a was, thing. it was before like refrigeration. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. and we're on a very strict harvest to ice schedule. And right. every oyster is accounted for. The traceability is like super strict. Yeah. Everyone has log books. It's a very regulated thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. definitely debunked. <laughs> I will say though, just before they go dormant, oysters. Uh huh. September, October, into November, they're kind of storing up all their fats uh -huh. and sugars for the winter because they're going to go dormant. They kind of know. So in the fall, they're like bursting, very firm, mm -hmm. su a sweeter for us because uh -huh. um, they're you know kind of holding on to their sugars. So those yeah, yeah. months are really, really good. They're okay. good all year. Yes. But those are but like especially really good. Yeah. Okay. How hungry? was the first person yeah, you ever ate an oyster. <laughs> you watch the birds eat them, you're like, they're probably pretty good. At high tide, where's, yeah, the, where, where's the water? Deep. So that all this is it's way submerged. Yeah. And <laughs> every piece of gear you see comes in in the winter and comes back out in the spring. Everything oh, you wow, see. Oh wow, really? Yeah. We, we'll put our oysters like in a deep hole. And because they're dormant, they just... They're, they're for like four months and then wow. you kind of like bring them back out and they go like, Amazing. thanks. It's like kind of an animal, but Kind of a it's plant. It's really weird, yeah. yeah. Right. Look how shallow it is. Yeah, literally the whole place is 10 feet of water. All this submerges? Twice a day, every day. For the yeah, most part? Up to the grass. Oh, actually, and sometimes over that grass, mm. yeah. What's this pole thing called? Uh, we just call it spuds. Spuds? Yeah. Do you, you use that to kind of? No, we just use it like as an anchor, oh, it's just so we an don't anchor. have to throw okay. the anchor all the time. Okay. And if the boat, like if we were to throw the boat on an anchor, we're like next to line, like, either bringing stuff in or taking stuff out. Yeah, yeah. It would like, there'd be a scope with the rope, you know what I mean? The wind could uh -huh. push it. But here, I lost my one pole, but if you put <laughs> one in the front and one in the back, it stays right there. Yeah, yeah. So it was like how I used to do it when I was alone. Mm. <clears throat> Just spud poles. How long were you alone for before you started stuff? Um, like maybe eight, seven years or so. Wow. I loved it. It's good. <laughs> you guys want to check it out? Yeah. So from that upweller, we'll get, you know, we get them super small, the two mils. Uh -huh. And then we sieve them and then we bring them out. They're so cute. Yes, yeah, so you see how the different sizes out here. If you pop one of these open, you can eat there it. is meat? Yeah. Okay. There's a float hmm. on this cage and then it floats up probably this high. And the tide will kind of tumble them in there and keep their shape like that. Left to their own devices, if they were in a tray and stuck in a tray, they would kind of grow at an angle like this one. They'll lose that uniform look and shape. You can see, I see. The, that oyster was kind like of nice. Yeah. I mean, I don't see that many birds, but it's like they must love this. The birds. They want to eat the. Yeah. They want to eat all the stuff. They don't though. They, they don't really. They, they're smart. They, they will eat a clam. Uh -huh. They'll drop a clam. So like, yeah. see the boat just here? Yeah. Just in front of that boat, you see like the mound of shells? Yeah. Okay, so that was that was something that was there, like like a pile of old rebar or something. Uh-huh. And the birds will see that and drop a clam on it. Because they know it's hard. And then it'll make a bigger pile. So uh -huh. that whole pile <laughs> oh. of clams is literally like birds, birds? Just eating it. Oh, wow. But the same thing won't, won't happen to an oyster if they you drop it. They won't do it. No, maybe the Because the shell can like, yeah. Once in a while, but the shells are different. Right, right, right. They're a little stronger. Oh, God. Yeah, oh yeah. Soft mud. <laughs> you stuck? I'd unstuck my foot. Some of these in here are almost ready for market. So like this would be like a, a smaller looking like a petite oyster. Uh -huh. And they still need a little more time, but this is this would be more like a regular. One two, by two by three? Yeah, that's kind of our goal. Like that's, you know, that's like our, when we're looking at like the perfect oyster, I guess would be one thick, two wide by three long. These are all like kind of have nice shapes to them. Do you ever get pearls? Is that a thing? I think. Is that a thing? It's definitely a thing, but we okay. don't know. We don't open them. Yeah, okay, true. I mean, one time I had a friend. Found a pearl found a in pearl their oyster? In their oyster. It was wow. one of ours. And I was like, that's legally, that's <laughs> like, ours. Right? The guy's like, no. <laughs> they took it home. But yeah, they found it like in the oyster, yeah. So it's like once they go from 
the upweller, it's about two years until they're ready for harvest. So the big ones were, you know, a lot older, but same flavor. It's like the rings of a tree kind of. It's like this little growth ring and then that. So like maybe that's. How many months is each ring? I think it's a year. It's like a season. Oh, wait. So yeah, that's you can tell, be... it's like It's like four, like maybe one, two, three, maybe four years old. That was it at one point. The tide was coming in. Things were starting to submerge. So then we hopped back on the boat and went to the barge. Our barge is always wet. See, it's floating. It never goes dry. We call it the soaker underneath the barge so that we, we can harvest right from there. They're kind of bringing the oysters there that they sorted and are going to bring to market and they're sorting them further, bagging them, and leaving them in the water there to then be picked up. Yo! Yo. What's up, guys? So we have a big pile of oysters here that are ready for market, but in different sizes and shapes. So the guys are just going through and uh, it's definitely a learned skill. You gotta get an eye for it. We do have like some culling rings that will separate them by size. This is three inches. So that would be a regular and a petite would be two and a half inches. But when you get into the a rhythm of it, you really don't need. And then from here, we'll bag them up into uh, usually bags of a hundred. Uh -huh. And then uh, uh, a refrigerated truck will meet us at the ramp. Harvest day, we'll take them out of here, drive them over there and just get them on ice. And, Get them out to the... And then off they go. All the restaurants, yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. So this is like the floor is kind of wide open. And when we harvest, we'll harvest from like 100 count bags. Oh, wow. Of, uh, this is 100. Pizzas. Yeah. So that's kind of how they go to market. Did you guys want to try to try a couple oysters right now? Sure. All right. I'm not a great chucker by any means, but we go in through the hinge and you kind of just slowly go in until you feel like a little bit of a purchase point. Uh -huh. And then it's like kind of like, looks feels like a lollipop. Yeah. Mm. There's two muscles. There's one here and then one on the opposing side. Yeah. So the first thing you do once you kind of get this little purchase point is you drag it across the top shell and break the that abductor muscle. Yeah. And then you have just the meat in the shell. And then you just can't forget about the other muscle, which is on the other side here. You just kind of break you loosen it. Yep. From that. Once you get the purchase, you just like twist it up and, right. it, and the shell almost like it. shifts over. Yeah. And then you get the muscle and then you have the meat. Yeah. Free. Sometimes with the really big Good. shells, you can break the yeah, totally. top shell yes. in half. And then, it, then you're screwed. That really sucks when that happens. So these are the, you said the, the These petite? are the petites, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's try that one. Nice, thank you. Mm. It's fresh. So clean tasting. Yeah, they're clean. Very, very clean. Mm, delish. It's obviously super briny, but it's not so salty. And like a little creamy. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Mm. So good. Really nice balance. Yeah, there's, like, it, we're kind of lucky. And honestly, like that, we don't have much to do with that. We're just <laughs> like kind of blessed to be in this spot. Yeah. yeah. Like we can make them look how as nice as we can, but as far as like the flavor profile, like. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to text my mom. <laughs> I forgot to text my mom a grocery list. All you need is a muffin tin. You, actually, you don't even need a muffin tin if you could do it in a cake pan. If you had a cake oh. pan, there's little difference between it's muffins oh. and cake. Exactly. I kind of put my parents to work a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah. It's good. You got it. They probably love it. They do love it. It's like you just steer. I'll point you going straight. So minor adjustment, just like a car. We won't trust the throttle, okay. so. <laughs> just got to steer like a little left here. Okay. A little up to left? Yep. I took away from my experience, besides just like learning a lot about oysters and feeling good about that because like whenever I'm eating them, I'm gonna think about that experience and what I learned and I know more about the food that I'm eating. But also just that like I really like farmers and I love seeing food grown. Nate, Greg and I are all like native Cape Codder, so it's like important to us like the sustainability is like, is a real thing. No. Yeah. We're raising our kids here, we live just over here. Business being business, there's good years and bad years, but we feel really lucky to do what we do. Even on our bad year, business-wise, we're still having like a really positive impact on the harbor, so it's, it's important to us. I just really like farmers and what they do, and that is fun. It's fun to talk to them. Thank you so much for showing us everything. Of course. You want to tell people where they can find out more about Mucho Oyster or like if they're available in their area? If they want to order direct, uh, shipped overnight, they can go through islandcreekoysters.com. Uh, 
Awesome. And they're our wholesaler, yeah, out of Duxbury, Mass. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sarah. I'll, awesome. I'll send you pictures yeah. of what we make. Send me some pictures, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you so that much. Mostly with oysters, I opt for raw because like we're always seeking out a good quality oyster and I think that's the best way to appreciate, especially an East Coast oyster, which is what I usually eat and what are grown here. But I want to do a recipe for some fried oysters because I haven't had any fried seafood yet this summer and you just, you have to during the summer months of Cape Cod. I love frying outside. I'm not worrying about like the smells or the hood. So we'll fry some, eat some raw, make a little tartar sauce, which is my favorite food.